In this video, we're going to learn about a concept called content projection, and we're going to use a component called ng-content to achieve that. Now, what is content projection? The idea is for components to be able to accept other DOM elements as arguments. Let me give you an example. Here is a blog post style component, which takes in a couple of inputs. Here's the post object, which contains the title, the description, and a whole lot of other stuff, right? This is purely data. It's an instance of an object, and you can have a component accept any number of objects like this as input arguments, and we've already covered that. Now, what if you want your component to kind of be like a container for other content which are in the DOM? For example, let's say I have, uh, my, I create a component called card, which is kind of like a card, a box with a border and a shadow, which people can use to display other card information. Now I want the behavior to be something like this, app card, and then inside this, I can have any information I want. Let's say I have a, a paragraph here, and let's say I have a heading here, and so on. There are a lot of block elements like this in HTML. You can have a div which behaves like this. Like you open a div, put all the content inside the div be between the open div and the closed div. And that content is going to be wrapped, if you will, uh, in that div element. Now what if you wanna create custom elements that look like that? Let's so say you wanna do this. If you were to do this, you would need a way for you to take that value between these two, uh, between these two, the starting and the ending of this selector. You want to take all this markup and then use it somehow in the component. I'm going to create something like this and I'll show you how this is done. Let's create that component by using Angular CLI, ng generate component card. And I'm going to have an app-card element. Now, if I were to use that thing that I had added over here and then do an ng-serve, I'm using the app-card and within the starting and the ending of the selector, I'm adding a couple of DOM elements. Now, how does this show? If I were to refresh the page, there is this card works, but I don't see the contents within it. Because what happens is when Angular sees this component being used, it is going to delegate the rendering of that component to the component that you've created. And the markup here just says card works. So whatever is being passed in between the opening and the closing of the selector in your blog list component is essentially ignored because Angular is pretty much delegating the view to your component. What you could do when you're writing a component is tell Angular that you're interested in what is being passed within the open and the close, right? This can allow you to place this content any place in the component that you wish, all right? So let's say I have a div here, and then I'm gonna say bordered. content here, and I'm going to style the div with a border. And now here you see, and you know, it's hard to tell here, but there is this div with, with a border. Let me actually add a max width fifty percent so that it can it's more obvious that there is this div over here. All right, so now we have a card like component. I know it's very primitive, doesn't look too good, but at least it you know you can tell that there is something like that here. There is a card like component and what you want to do is achieve that functionality where you pass in the content 
and whatever you put in between these two should go over here, wherever you say content here. You can achieve this in Angular with a certain component called ng-content. What this does is let Angular know that you are interested in the content that's passed to the component if there is any, if there's any content between the open and the close of the selector, please pass that in and put that in here. This is what ng-content is saying. ng-content is saying this is where you want that content to be plugged in in your component. Now if I press save, now here you see the heading in the paragraph is now rendered within the card. Let me actually move this up so that it's easy to see. I guess I should have done that in the beginning, but well, I'll put this here so that it's easy to see what's going on. All right, so here you see there's a card with the content not being a part of the card, but instead is sent from the consumer of that card, the consumer of that component. The consumer can pass in anything they want and that's going to get rendered over here, right? So I can create one more use of this. I'm gonna put this at the top here. And here what I'm gonna do is uh, put this content inside the card. The couple of links that we have is going to be inside the card now. Now if I press save, now here you see that link is inside the card. So this makes this component super flexible. The component is providing the structure and then whatever DOM elements are being used between the selectors is what's getting rendered in that component, right? So it's a very handy way to achieve uh, reusable components like this, which provide like the structure or the frame, and then you can pass in the DOM elements. In the next video, what we're gonna be doing is using this concept to create the concept of a page shell. A page shell or an application shell is very commonly used in a lot of Angular applications. And using this ng-content, we can implement this kind of a concept. Look at that in the next video.